Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Expansion. In the last episode I was talking about how I didn't have remotely enough science coming through from my um, science production facilities up here and how these science factories weren't actually running through it as quickly as I wanted given the sheer quantities that are required for the faster than light research. So in an attempt to, uh, to fix both of those, down here in this bottom southeast corner I built up another set of the um, of the science production facilities and another uh, research lab set up down here. Now these are running a little bit slowly at the, or the construction is going a little bit slowly. They are all built up and and running though they're, they're all producing the uh, producing the science as, as they're supposed to. Um, however I don't have remotely enough um, in, uh, of the productivity modules that I'm using so I need another one uh, 1100 of these and the problem is it's a very very slow process and very very resource hungry because I actually went through and uh, counted up each one of these uh, Mark 8 productivity modules that's produced requires 24 of these productivity processor boards that's because this one requires 8, 6 and 4 I think uh, no that's not enough it must be it must be 10, 8 and 6 uh, yeah that sounds right 10, 8 and 6 for each of these steps and it obviously passes up the chain so that means it requires 24 of these boards, which requires 24 of these red crystals, which are coming through at a reasonable rate from over here. I've got I've got a supply of um, about 530 of them, so that's what that's um, for 20. That's enough to make 21 of these uh, of these modules, and I need 1,100 of them. Fortunately, more is being made over here, of course, and there's another. Um, 350 or so here, so that's enough for another another um, nine, 10. <laughs> so this is being, uh, uh, no, 13, 14, I can't maths. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a slow process to actually make up the 1100 of those that I require. So what I've been doing is I've been, because I'm getting some of them delivered by um, by uh, logistics robot, I've been trying to put them into that the, the highest priority machines first. So I've gone along and I've put them into a lot of the um, assembly machines for here we go for some of the more expensive and difficult um, science modules so I should be getting a few more of these and again the uh, the pink ones actually there's lots of the pink ones now so as you can so it's, the idea is I'm trying to sort of to boost the production in the areas where it's needed that said because faster than light theory B only requires red and yellow science this is all this is all the rest of it is quite a long way off in, in the future so by the time I get to um, producing fast, the later faster than light uh, researches maybe I'll uh, maybe everything will be under control the other thing is I need to I want to have the productivity modules in these in these uh, research labs as well that won't actually affect how many research packs I get through per minute but it will affect how much research is actually done so uh, as I said before these productivity modules boost the speed so I've got I get an extra 40% from each of these, so that's um, yeah, and about two and a, running about two and a half times normal speed. Um, but it's not actually taking in any, sorry, two and a half times normal productivity. But it's not actually taking in any extra um, modules for that, uh, any science modules for that, or taking in any, um, or running any slower because of it, like it would in vanilla. So. I've got the same same level of throughput of the science packs. As you can see, these are both running almost flat out. Um, and it's doing at least the ones that have got the ones that are fully science, uh, fully moduled up, are doing two and a half times the amount that you'd expect them to. And then the ones up here that are still waiting are just running at norm, uh, normal levels of productivity. So it's it's okay. It 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 it'll 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 work. It'll keep going. Um, but the more of these productivity modules we can get produced, the more efficiently it'll run, and the and the and generally the better it'll be for that sort of point of view. One thing I did discover as I was putting this together <laughs> is when you go in and dump a massive blueprint down like this that has a load of um, LTN stations in it, there is a strong risk of you getting a train coming in uh, so the, st the station gets placed and all the railway up to it before all of these inserters for unloading the train. So what, it, you, what ends up happening is an LTN train will arrive with a full load of whatever is supposed to be going into that station. It'll sit there for a couple of minutes with nothing being unloaded. And then it'll go, okay, I've timed out, and we'll go back to the depot. 
at that point my alarm my, my depot alarm goes off you might remember that from earlier episodes when when it when things screw up and a train that's still partly loaded uh, ends up in the in the depot an alarm goes off so i can go over and fix it but i was getting a, a lot of those because all the trains were go, coming back over it around here and unfortunately a couple of them slipped through and that meant i ended up getting um well one of the things that happened was iron got unloaded into the tin unloading station here and then sprayed all the way up this belt so that was fun going through and cleaning that up and there were a couple of other places where random things got dumped in the wrong place and that's it's quite annoying when that happens it's it's a faff to clear up and I, yeah I, I wish it wouldn't happen quite so often <laughs> The other thing that's had happened on a similar note, at some point, I think quite a long time ago, I got a load of, somehow got a load of steel dumped into the, um, the coal drop, um, station over here, wherever that is, um, I'm not sure, is this coal here, this, this one, and so now, every so often, I'll go in, I'll, I'll have a look at this, and I'll go, why isn't this particular part of my factory working, and it'll turn out to be because there's a big chunk of steel on, on one of the, um, the coal or the carbon belts, so this thing I keep this sort of thing I keep having to come in and clean out and that's also quite annoying um, especially when it makes an entire section of the factory grind to a halt because it doesn't have any of any of whatever input it needs so I'm going to need to go over and sort that out and you know the silly thing is I've, I keep looking at this and finding little places where steel's been built up and, and here as well has it somehow it's got onto the um, onto the limestone belt as well I don't really understand that <laughs> it's, it's all a bit weird oh and there's some here as well so, as you can see, it's just sort of scattered all over the place, and yeah, it's a bit of a pain. And every so often I find a couple of extra places, I go in and clear them up, and then there's always somewhere else where it happens. I don't know whether it happens again, or whether it's just still stuff from a previous problem that's uh, <laughs> just reco recurring. Oh well. So, that is essentially working. Um, so yeah, science is essentially working. It's put a bit of strain on the um, on the inputs, as I was as I was saying, I expected to happen. So we've got problems. We had problems with nickel ingots. That's sort of a, a bit of a holdout now, so because I've built another facility here that's producing nickel as fast as required. So that's feeding it up a really long belt that goes all the way up here, then hooks into this one that was coming out of this um, railway station over here, and that then feeds it over to wherever it goes. Um, oh, down here for tungsten, I think, and also down here somewhere for brass or bronze. Brass. This one's brass, I'm pretty sure. So from here, I've got, I've now got a nice supply of brass being produced. The nitinol is being produced at a, a suitable rate again because it's got the the, uh, the nickel coming in. So everything seems to be generally pretty happy down here. If I have a look at my stations, how are we doing here? This is silicon ore, I think, but there's 189,000 of that. So a train, obviously, a train's just been in and picked some up. Um, but it's not getting to the point where I need to worry about the supply of it. Um, uranium is very low, but I don't really care about uranium because I'm not really using it. I might have to think about um, nuclear power at some point. Uh, nitinol ingots I don't need, which is why this is empty. Uh, these I only need occasionally when I launch satellites. Here we go. Aluminium, however, on the other hand, is struggling. There's 25,000 in there, which isn't too bad. That's doing It's just doing all right, but I wish it was doing a bit better. I might consider running another belt up here and seeing if I can get it going a bit faster. Gold, that one's fine. Steel, uh, steel is not fine. I. It looks like I need to try and find a way of making more steel. That's going to be tricky because it's... Well, st steel is tricky <laughs> because it requires so much iron. Um, even this entire facility pulling in at quite a rate along here is still only producing two, uh, almost two green belts of it so um, I'm not sure what be how best to deal with this let's see so it does look actually like the, these these sorters are producing it more than fast enough the the the, the, um, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for bottlenecks are further on so this this processed iron is being produced about twice as fast as it's being used the the um the ore is being produced faster than it's being used and even the and even the pellets are being produced faster than they're being used so there's definitely potential along here to run all of this a lot faster i could come along actually i could come along and fill this up with um with speed modules that would probably help quite a lot but then there's but then maybe i'd overfill these belts and actually no there's there's still a bit of room in the belts 
yes, I think if I do that, that's going to help quite a bit. And then we can then we can look further down here and find out how I'm doing for sort of how how full it's getting. Okay, we'll do that for the next episode. So that that'll help us help with the steel. An aluminium. Yeah, there's a bit more than the one purple belt coming out here. So maybe I'll upgrade all of this to green and see if, see how, how that does and see if it can then cope. So the reason I'm getting through so much aluminium I've worked out is down here. It's with these um, these low density structures. Aluminium is being pulled through at, at a hell of a rate here. And the other two, to a slightly lesser extent, it's, it's much heavier on the aluminium. So I've gone in and I've put the productivity modules in all the way along here. Uh, well, until I run out of them at least. So that's helping uh, but even so I've still only got 6.2 thousand low density structures here those are required for rocketry stuff and for green science so they're under a fair amount of demand at the moment yeah here we go here that they're being pulled in for the green science production over here uh, that will eventually fill up and I'm not going to be using that for a while so that's probably not too much of a worry but it's still getting through a lot of a lot of resources Right, so that's how things have been going. Oh, the other thing I've done. Yes, I um, with all of these moduled up um, assembly machines everywhere, I'm getting through massive quantities of power. So I've built another huge pair of um, solar fields over here. As you can see, these are absolutely enormous. Um, one thing you might notice from this is I'm using the Mark 1 solar panels everywhere. I decided this is probably the best way to go. Yes, it takes a bit longer to build everything out, but there is the level of resources used to make a Mark 1 panel is so much less than to make a Mark III panel, and the power gain isn't isn't really that enormous. If I, if I look up, let's see, if I look up solar, I've got the solar panel one is just copper, steel, and and basic basic electronics boards. Two then you require starts to require silver and red boards, and red boards are a bit I admit, a bit, have a bit of a shortage of. And look, it requires nine of the things. Jeez, and then. Um, Solar panel three requires silicon wafers and, and and blue boards as well. So there's an enormous amount of extra resources in there to take it from 60 kilowatts to 135 kilowatts. So it's 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 slightly over double, but the the resource cost, for want of a better word, you look at the look at the raw ingredients there. It's and it's and this, this is where it's treating red and blue and if it's treating the circuit boards as as raw ingredients, there's an enormous jump in what's required from there to there. So I decided it was better to go for the um, go for the Mark Ones rather than the Mark Threes and just have them in bulk. The other possibility is to go for the large solar panels, um, and now they produce 107, which is slightly less than double, but they require roughly double the ingredients, um, slightly fewer than double the um, electronics boards, but double the other two. So. I decided that yeah probably let's stick with the um, with the generic normal small solar panels. I did I did test out the larger ones over here just sort of do a see how many I'd be able to fit around a, uh, a substation. I could upgrade to Mark II substations perhaps and it'd require fewer of them, but again it's probably not worth it. So yeah, massive massive solar array going on over going in over here there are a few points where there's slightly funny things have happened due to building it over the top of um, whatever was there before but so some funny gaps in it but I don't think that actually matters it, it, it's not worth the hassle of going in and trying to remove trying trying to remove the um, uh, robo ports and, and to get a few to get sort of four or five extra solar panels uh, when there's so many of them going in anyway and it's quite nice you can just dump it straight over the top of a a mine like this and it'll fill in all the gaps and yeah okay there's a couple of them down here that aren't getting that don't have a um a substation within range but basically it, it, it just works you, you've got you've got your coverage and i can ha cut the corners off here for railways and things like that so how are we doing for power with the, with all of that said so as you can see we've got we're using 1.8 1.9 out of 2.7 so it's a good amount of headroom there most of it's coming from um most most of it's coming from uh, the solar panels as you'd expect and currently the, the, ste the emergency steam engines are still turned off. So yeah, I'd say that's working quite nicely. Is there anything else I've done? I don't think there is really. I've been, I've been again, I've been going around sort of chucking a few extra modules in things and just generally trying to speed things up. There's a bit, been a bit of that, but most, mostly I'm trying to now save the uh, the modules that are actually being made to go into the um, into the facilities down here. 
Oops. So that's going to be a very, very slow process. Oh, the research is nearly finished. That's good. Um, it's going to be a very, very slow process, but eventually we'll get there and it'll just make things run slightly faster and smoother um, over time. At the moment, we're mostly pulling in iron and copper. And how are they doing? 13. OK, copper is struggling. I might have to go and have a look at that as well. And iron isn't doing too brilliant, particularly brilliantly either. OK, so I am just generally being enormously resource hungry. Uh, we shall have to see how that goes. I'll take a look at this between um, before the next episode, I'm sure. So um, I'll report back then. Thank you for watching. I'll see you then when we'll uh, carry on playing with resource production.